During the Permian period, all of Earth's major land masses were conjoined into one large supercontinent known as Pangaea. For over 130 million years, Pangaea stayed intact as the sole major landmass on the entire planet. Throughout the millions of years spanning its existence, Pangaea has seen creatures of all different shapes and sizes come and go. This was especially the case during the Permian period, which had a total of three extinction events, reshaping life on Earth each and every time. However, rising out of the ashes of the second extinction 260 million years ago, a large armored herbivore would come to thrive in what is now Western Russia, as it pushed through Pangaea's harsh and deadly conditions up until the bitter end of the Paleozoic Era. One of the largest creatures of the Permian period, this robust animal became one of the most well-known creatures of its time. Welcome to our next Extinction Files episode on Scutosaurus, Davina's Shield Bearer. The discovery of Scutosaurus goes as far back as 1899, when Russian paleontologist Vladimir Prokhorovich Amelitsky discovered the first ever remains in the northern Divina River, located in the European side of Russia. Between 1899 to 1914, during the beginning of the First World War, Amelitsky and his wife oversaw the excavation of various fossilized articulated skeletons of different genera and species. It would not be until the height of the war that Scutosaurus would get its specific name. In 1917, British zoologist David Meredith Sears Watson would give it the name Pariasaurus Karpinski, meaning Karpinski's cheek lizard or reptile. Interestingly, the generic name was actually a misspelling of the South African genus Pariasaurus, and the Y in the species name would later be replaced with another I. The specimen, PIN 2005-1535, consists of a fragmentary scapula coracoid. In 1922, Amelitsky passed away by the time the actual diagnosis would be published. The new publication designated the holotype PIN 2005-1532 a new and nearly complete skeleton under the name Pariosaurus Karpinski as yet another misspelling of Pariosaurus. In addition, three partial skulls were described as the same genus but split into three additional species, those three species being P. elegans, P. tuberculatus, and P. horridus. By 1930, Soviet paleontologist Alexandra Polinovna Anna Hartman Weinberg would state that all Pariasaur material found in North Davina was distinct enough from Pariasaurus to warrant its own genus. Whilst considering both original names were accidental misspellings of Pariasaurus, she declared that all three Pariosaurus species are junior synonyms, and erected the genus and type species Scutosaurus Karpinski, meaning Karpinski's shield lizard or reptile. The second I in the species name was later brought back in 1937. In the same paper, Hartman Weinberg described yet another genus, dubbed Prolgenia permiana, based on yet another skull named PIN-1562. This would last until 1968 when paleontologist N. N. Kalandadze and colleagues suggested synonymizing Prolgenia back into Scutosaurus due to the poor state of the remains. In 1987, paleontologist Mikhail Fyodorovich Ivachnenko would resurrect the informal S. tuberculatus and erect a new species, S. italensis, based on even more fragmentary skull material belonging to the specimen PIM-3919. However, both species would be synonymized back to S. Karpinski by biologist Michael S. Y. Lee in 2000. Scutosaurus karpinski is the only species that is considered valid alongside the validity of Prolgenia permiana, which to this day is still debated. Scutosaurus was one of the largest reptiles to have ever roamed during the Lopingian Epoch of the Permian period. 
reaching lengths of around 2.5 to 3 meters or 8.2 to 9.1 feet and weighing up to 1,160 kilograms or 2,560 pounds, Scutosaurus rivaled both Bradysaurus and Embrithosaurus in body length. However, all three Periosaurs were dwarfed in size by the 5 to 6 meter or 16 to 20 foot long Therapsid Antiosaurus, one of the largest Permian land animals to have been discovered overall. While not as large as other land animals that existed after Scutosaurus and its kin, their body sizes made them comparable to the megafauna that existed long after their extinction, making them one of a kind in the Permian. Scutosaurus is grouped into the parareptilian subgroup known as Pariasauridae, otherwise known as Therischia, a subgroup that resides within Pariasauria. Pariasauria was a respectively herbivorous clade or superfamily within the Procolophonomorpha order, which first appeared in the Gelian stage, the last stage of the Pennsylvanian subperiod in the Carboniferous. Velosauria, which is where Therischia resides, also includes another subgroup known as Pomilia Pariasauria. Velosaurians were among the larger members of this clade and can be distinguished by their small heads and short tails along with being covered in heavily armored osteoderms. Depending on the genus, their heads were generally distinct from one another. For instance, Algenonine Therischians possessed a spiked head, while Therischians like the more basal Argonoceros had a prominent nose horn. Scutosaurus itself had a significantly shorter nose horn than the former. The most distinct cranial trait of the genus, however, are the bosses extending from its cheeks. The order itself belongs to an extinct clade of sauropsids known as Parareptilia, or near reptiles, a sister group of the extant clade known as Eureptilia, otherwise known as true reptiles, which contains modern clades like Archosauria, like crocodilians and birds, and Lepidosauria, like snakes and lizards. Several paleontologists have long speculated that Scutosaurus and other Pariosaurus may have been closely related to turtles, perhaps even ancestral. However, the discovery of a Middle Triassic reptile called Papakiles, a potential relative of turtles, is what called their theory into question. Even more so, more DNA analysis has found that turtles are more closely related to clades like Archosauria and Lepidosauria, making them closer to you reptiles than closer to any parareptile lineages. Scutosaurus first appeared in the Capitanian Wuchiapingian boundary of the Guadalupian and Lopingian epochs of the Permian period, around 260 million years ago potentially evolving and surviving around the end Capitanian extinction, the second extinction to occur during the Permian. Being known from the Malokinelskaya, Salarevskaya, Poldarsa, and Salarevo formations, along with other unnamed localities, Scutosaurus had an overall wide range, being found across Western European Russia. Scutosaurus and its contemporary fauna inhabited a semi-arid environment that dramatically changed depending on the season. In the dry season, there was little water and shelter, and the overall region was dominated by deserts, small patches of forests, and permanently dry lake beds, which made the region a harsh place. Once the wet season arrived, heavy rain would flood the biome, creating temporarily filled river channels and lakes, with plants making a comeback. While no flora is known from any of the formations listed prior, there are localities from the same time that give us a picture of what existed with Scutosaurus and other herbivores. The plants that lived during this time and region would consist of plants like Agathoxylon, one of the earliest true pine trees, Neocalamites, a giant semi-aquatic horse tail, and many other different and mostly informal species of cycads, ginkgos, conifers, ferns, and other different types of vascular plants along with mosses. Scutosaurus lived with an assortment of different life forms, including its own kind. The most common fossils found in its formations mainly consist of insects that flourished the Permian skies above, and the fish that swam through the waterways like the Platysomus and the Xenocynacotus. Scutosaurus coexisted with animals big and small, such as therapsids like the Dicynodontid Dicynodonts, Vivaxosaurus, Fertunodon, and Delectosaurus, along with the very distantly related monkey-like tree-climbing Suminia and Therocephalians like the herbivorous Perlovia and the carnivorous Anatherapsidus, Moscowitia, and many more, along with the Cynodont Divinia. Other non-synapsid residents include amphibians and reptiliomorphs like Croniosuchus, Carpinskiosaurus, Divinosaurus, and Kotlasia, along with other pariosaurs like Delta Jadia and the Elginanine Obercovia. Interestingly, 
An unnamed species of one of the earliest archosaurs, the Proterozoochid archosaurus, has also been found in this region of Russia. Being one of the last Pariasaurids, Scutosaurus was the largest herbivore of its environment, and thanks to its massive body size, no other herbivore can really compete. However, Scutosaurus was also a prime target for many different predators that existed in this region. While young Scutosaurus were likely preyed on by smaller Therocephalians, adults had to worry about many other Therapsids, including the giant Therocephalian Megawaitsia, and Gorgonopsids like Leogorgon, and the infamous Innistrancevia, armed with massive saber teeth designed to cut through flesh. Teeth like these are exactly why Scutosaurus and its kin evolved armored skin to begin with. Underneath their skin are rows of bony plates that acted similarly to brigandine armor. However, one strike to the throat is all it takes. Alongside the stem mammalian predators, Scutosaurus also had to worry about the large Croniosuchid Uralerpitan depending on its age and health. Overall, Scutosaurus seemed to have played an important role in its environment, despite the fact that it and its contemporaries were living on an already sick planet as the diversity of species in its environment were going extinct left and right, while this massive herbivore pushed through to the bitter end. While Scutosaurus has unfortunately not appeared in a whole lot of media, its appearances are primarily in the form of documentaries. With its debut in the 2005 three-parter documentary series, Walking with Monsters, Life Before Dinosaurs, the prequel of the iconic Walking with Dinosaurs. It was depicted being hunted by an unnamed Gorgonopsid. The same creators of the Walking with trilogy also occasionally showcase Scutosaurus in the 2007 sci-fi drama series titled Primeval. Later, it appeared in the 2011 documentary Earth, The Making of a Planet. The latest documentary appearance for Scutosaurus was in the 2023 Netflix exclusive documentary series Life on Our Planet where it was once again featured being hunted by yet another therapsid, this time potentially being the Therocephalian Moscarinus. This is the first documentary to feature Scutosaurus outside of Russia, showing that they possibly lived in South Africa. While there is a fossil record of Pariasaurus present in South Africa, Scutosaurus was not among them. As for video games, Scutosaurus has made an appearance in the 2018 mobile game Jurassic World Play, along with Jurassic World Alive in Update 1.14 in 2020 as an epic tier creature. Hopefully in the future, Scutosaurus will make more appearances in pop culture and earn more recognition. Scutosaurus was a rather fascinating animal. It not only survived a major extinction event, but it also pushed forward into the Lopingian Epoch being one of a few late Permian fauna to outlast others that suddenly went extinct. If that's not all, it was one of the largest terrestrial organisms of its time, overshadowing most of the smaller herbivores present in its geographic region. This shield reptile was definitely one of a kind. Unfortunately, as with many creatures of the latest Permian, including Scutosaurus, their extinction would be a brutal one. Approximately 251 million years ago, Volcanic activity in a region of eastern Russia, now known today as the Siberian Traps, abruptly spiked, causing a massive increase in global CO2 levels. The gas released by these eruptions would begin a catastrophic chain reaction that would see increased global temperatures, a major decrease in oceanic oxygen levels, and ocean acidification. The toxic effects of these volcanic gases would spell doom for almost all terrestrial life, and Scutosaurus and its kin were not exempt from this mass culling, for it and its fellow Pariasaurs completely perished, along with 90% of all living life on the planet. From fauna to flora, this extinction, which we now know today as the Great Dying, or scientifically, the Permian-Triassic mass extinction, is considered to be the worst mass extinction in the history of life on Earth, and it represents the closest point in Earth's history to have the planet completely sterilized since before life itself came into being.
However, there is a bit of nuance to this tragic tale. Rising out of the ashes of the Great Dying, as the sun set on the Paleozoic Era, came the survivors of the greatest extinction ever. This also included the order that the Pariasaurs were a part of, which would continue onward until the late Triassic. In addition, new forms of life would evolve to inherit what was left behind. Filling in vacant niches, and in some ways, creating new ones. While Scutosaurus may not have been alive to experience this new age, it still lives on in the minds of paleontologists, who excavate and study their fossilized remains. It is with their work that we can come to understand the unique life that existed in the late Permian, such as creatures like Scutosaurus, Davina's shield bearer. Thank you all for watching our first official video featuring a Paleozoic animal covering the one and only Scutosaurus. We hope you've enjoyed this one, as we put a lot of work into getting it out. Paleozoic life is often overshadowed by the Mesozoic and Cenozoic, and they definitely deserve more attention. This video was directed by The Primal Earth, narrated by myself, Spinodragon145, scripted by The Crimson Acro, myself, Rango Gamer, and Straight Up Murph, edited by Legit Eliminator, MikeMC9797, the Primal Earth, Straight Up Murph, and Crimson Acro. The research team for this video includes myself, Crimson Acro, Straight Up Murph, Rango Gamer, and the graphic designers for this video were the Dinosaur Hunter and Methylisation 101. As always, we'll see you all next time on Epoch Now.